In this video we're going to explain how computer systems encode integers which of course as we saw before they have to do that in binary logic zeros and ones so in order to encode integers computer used two approaches the first one is fairly intuitive suppose we have to encode the number minus 56 we can approach this problem from a very trivial standpoint which is this is a sign which is either positive or negative so it's only two possible values which are very easy to encode we could use one single bit and encode the plus with a zero and the minus with a one once we have decided this encoding of the sign then we just need to encode this other number but this other number as we know we can encode it as a natural number in other words using regular base 2 and if you do the operations this corresponds with the encoding 111000 now suppose we want to use this scheme and encode our integers using and this is very important 8 bits if we use 8 bits we know we're going to use 1 for design so in this case would be minus one and then we need to expand this code such that it fills the remaining seven bits in this case would be zero one 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 zero 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 we have to pad this result with an additional zero so this would be our encoding of integers following this scheme as you can see these seven bits here are encoding the magnitude and this single bit here is encoding the sign and this is the reason why this scheme is called very intuitively sign and magnitude if we look at the type of numbers we encode here and we draw this representation of the integers num integers zero here suppose these are all the integers we obviously are going to represent not all of them because they are infinite but only a subset so number zero would be here in the middle the maximum number we can represent with sign and magnitude is actually a zero followed by several ones as many as we decide the size of our encoding in this example would be eight bits so it would be zero followed by seven bits on the other hand the minimum number which would be this other extreme the minimum integer we can represent with this scheme would be a one 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 all ones if we decide to use 8 bits would be 8 ones now this encoding is very intuitive and the name kind of summarizes the way it works but it has a little bit of a strange property which is what happens with the representation of the zero and as we can see the zero right here can have two possible representations suppose we stick to our 8 bit size so this would be one possible representation all zeros but also this would be another equivalent one therefore we end up with two codes for the zero and this is not very desirable the other thing that we haven't explained is that once you have decided on an encoding you have to know the rules to perform additions to perform subtractions multiplications divisions etc in other words it's not enough to encode the integers but you also have to figure out how to operate with these integers okay so this is the first encoding we have seen again sign and magnitude very intuitive however it has this undesirable property over here now over the years scientists has have come together and realized that there are other possibilities for encoding let's represent again this line representing all the integers here we have the maximum and the minimum now one nice property of this encoding is that all positive numbers have the leftmost bit to zero so we can say that this is the sign bit this new encoding that we're going to propose now what it does is the following it considers a unique representation for the zero which is all zeros and what it does is all the negative numbers are going to be represented by the ones starting with a one in the most significant bit but they're going to be flipped they're going to be reversed so this is the number minus one minus one is going to represent to be represented in this encoding as all ones 
and then we're going to keep decreasing this binary encoding until we reach to the minimum number and the minimum number is going to be represented by a 1 of course because it's negative followed by all zeros so let's take a second to review this new encoding rather than having the numbers overlap with two codes over zero now we only have one single representation for zero and the only other counterintuitive property is that the number left to the zero which is minus one now has all ones another way of looking at it the negative numbers now are encoded by these increasing values from one followed by all zeros all the way to one one but it's starting from the minimum to minus one now this is like I said, a little bit kind of intuitive. So the question is, how do we encode a number with this scheme? In other words, if I have an integer, how do I translate it to this new encoding, which, by the way, is called two's complement? How do I make this transition or this translation? As a matter of fact, there are a few rules that are very easy to apply. So let's work with an example. Suppose I need to translate the number minus 56 from integer to two's complement. The first rule that we have to apply is, if the number is positive, the encoding is the regular binary encoding that we apply for natural numbers. So we only need to worry about specific rules for negative numbers. If we have to encode or we have to translate an integer which is positive to two's complement, we just take its natural representation and that's it. Now for the negative numbers, on the other hand, we have to apply three steps. The first one is to convert the magnitude to binary. In other words, 56, forget about the sign for the time being, we have to convert it to binary. And we saw here in the example that 56 is 111000. Now we're going to assume that our integers are represented with 8 bits, and therefore our correct result needs to be padded with two additional bits here 00, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So this would be a step number one to convert minus 56 to two's complement representation. Step number two, careful with this one, is to flip all the bits. So the representation instead of being 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, three zeros, we go to 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And step number three, perhaps the most important, we have to add one to the result. In other words, we have this number, we do plus 1, and we perform this addition, which is 1 plus 0. Sorry, 1 plus 1, 0. 1 plus 1, 0. 1 plus 1, 0. 0 plus 1, 1. And then 0, 0, 1, 1. And these we obtain here, the representation of minus 56 in 2's complement. So again, repeating. Whenever we have a negative number, only negative numbers, because positive numbers are represented as, as regular naturals. When we have a negative number, we convert the, binary, the magnitude to binary first, flip all the bits, add 1. Okay. Now, this encoding has a very important and counterintuitive property. Suppose that I have to encode now number 12. Now, as I said before, Coding number 12 in two's complement is trivial because the only rule that applies is I encode it as a natural. And again, since we're using 8 bits, my representation is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is represented number 12. Now here comes the most important property of two's complement. What happens if I want to perform this operation? Minus 56 plus 12. So this is basically operating regularly two integers. We can do the operation right away and we know that the result is minus 44. But now look at what happens here. What happens if I take these two binary codes, which you'll agree with me, are the two's complement encoding of 56 and 12, and I directly apply the regular arithmetic rules of addition. So I add the two numbers. If I add the two numbers, I obtain the combination 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 
Again, this is the result of adding the two binary representations of number minus 56 and 12 represented at, as two's complement. Now let me use this combination to apply the reverse translation from two's complement to integer. And again, we have to apply three steps. So let's take this example and apply three steps. Step number one, to obtain the integer from a representation in two's complement, which again, it requires only special steps if the number is negative, if it has a one here. If our result had a zero here, then the translation would be trivial because it's just two, a binary two number, which you directly translate to the corresponding positive number. But since it is negative, as in the case of this translation from integer to two's complement, we need special steps. And the steps again are three. First one, you flip all the bits again. So this number becomes zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one. Step number two, you add one. So we put a one here, perform this addition, one and one is zero, one and one is zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero. And now, step number three is translate to natural. We need to translate this number to natural, but as we know, this is the bit with weight 2 to the 0, so this is 1, 2, 4, so it'll be 4 plus 8, 16 is 0, we don't add that one, 32, 0 and 0. Therefore, this number is 32 plus 8 plus 4, 44. But we started with a negative number, we know this, therefore, my result is number 44. Now here is the most important property of two's complement, which is, if I take the representation of two's complement of two integers, and I apply regular addition rules for arithmetic, regular arithmetic addition rules, the number that I obtain corresponds precisely with the two's complement representation of the result, as we have proved over here. The only thing to take into account is that when the numbers are negative, the translation of integer to two's complement and two's complement to integer, they both require these three steps, which I suggest you practice so that you can remember them by heart. Now, to conclude, this is actually the preferred representation of integers, and it's mostly for three reasons. The first one, most important one, addition rule. Addition rule is refers to the fact that I can use regular addition in the two's complement code and it works perfectly for integers encoded in two's complement. Second rule, I have one single code for zero. This is very important. The code is more efficient because I do not have this duplication that I used to have here in sign and magnitude. And finally, another interesting property is I still preserve the sign bit. In other words, every integer encoded in two's complement still preserves the property that the leftmost bit or the most significant bits bit represents the sign.